Ahead of unveiling the new iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, Apple has hyping up its Let Loose launch event as a different kind of Apple event and the most important iPad launch since the original iPad. And now that the dust has settled, it seems that the hype was largely justified. The iPad Pro 13-inch along with 11-inch model that was also announced is an incredibly accomplished and versatile device that, as the marketing spell that accompanies it makes clear, features plenty of firsts and best is the first time an Apple M Plus chip has debuted in an iPad rather than a Mac. It's the thinnest ever Apple device and it has the best screen you can get on a tablet. The iPad Pro 13-inch is clearly a product made by a market leader at the top of its game. It's a stunning bit of kit that's packed with cutting-edge tech and is a shoe-in for the best tablet you can buy in 2024 for its specs alone. But this also means, somewhat counterintuitively, that this is not a tablet for everyone. For a start along with the lofty specs, features and performance claims Apple is making for the iPad Pro 13-inch comes an equally sky-high price tag, $1,299 for the base model and $2,199 is for max specs model. That price immediately puts it out of the reach of many people and this is clearly not a tablet that's designed for just browsing the web and watching videos on the couch. The fact that the new iPad Pro is also a showcase for Apple's brand new M4 chip suggests to me that this isn't a tablet that's simply designed to replace your older iPad. Amazon Kindle or Galaxy Tab but a device that's designed to replace your MacBook and when put into that context, the price of the iPad Pro is much more understandable. If you are not looking for the top of the range tablet to replace your laptop and just want something more affordable for casual tasks, the new iPad Air 6 will be much more appealing and it comes with some neat features of its own. However, if you are after an accomplished with a kit that can handle some seriously heavy workloads including video editing and music production while also coming in an incredibly thin and light form factor, then the iPad Pro 13-inch could prove to be a very sound investment indeed. If, like me, you were surprised to see the M4 chip debuted in the new iPad Pro rather than in a Mac, the new design of this tablet goes some way towards explaining the decision. According to Apple, both the incredibly thin body and the tandem OLED technology that powers the new Ultra Retina Exeter display of the new iPad Pros are only possible thanks to advancement with the M4 chip, primarily around energy efficiency, thermal performance, and a new and improved 10-core GPU and new display engine to handle the more demanding screen. Apple claims that the M4 chip can provide the same level of performance as the M2 chip using half the power. Of course, the M4 chip can also provide much higher performance than the M2, but this level of power efficiency has allowed Apple to make the iPad Pro 13-inch incredibly thin and light with dimensions of 281.6 by 2. 115.5 by 5.1 mm and weight of 579 grams. This is thinner than the 5.9 mm thickness of the iPad Pro 11 2022 and noticeably thinner than the 6.4 mm of the iPad Pro 12.9 2022. In fact, Apple goes as far as to say that the iPad Pro 13 inch is the thinnest device it's ever made. It certainly feels that way, coating dimensions of won't give you a real idea of just how thin the iPad Pro 13-inch 24 is. You need to see it and feel it for yourself. Despite having a larger display than the previous model, the 13-inch iPad Pro is easily portable especially if you are used to carrying around a 13-inch laptop. As for Apple's claims that it's the thinnest device it's ever made, I put it next to an AirTag 
the thinnest Apple product I had to hand and the iPad Pro 13 inch 24 is indeed thinner even if only just. This is quite the achievement considering that one of these devices is a premium and powerful tablet computer and the other is essentially a location tracker that's designed to be as universe strip as possible when attached to your belongings. Having such a thin, light and expensive device might be a bit concerning for some and the iPhone 6 Plus will still be in a lot of people's mind even after all those years. The good news is that despite its incredibly slim design, the iPad Pro 13 inch 2024 feels impressively robust and while you won't want to go throwing it around as you might a cheap and cheerful Android tablet that costs a fifth of the price, you won't feel like you are handling a delicate artifact that could shatter at any moment. As you might expect, a range of covers and protective cases are available for the iPad Pro 13 inch from Apple itself and third parties like Logitech. I'd certainly recommend buying one to help protect your expensive purchase, especially as many such as Apple's new Magic Keyboard add additional features to the tablet. The body of the iPad Pro 13 inch 24 is made with 100% recycled aluminium and not only is this good for the environment, but it helps give the iPad Pro a solid and dependable feel without being too heavy. The iPad Pro is available in two colors, silver and space black, which is the version I was sent and which you can see pictured toward the, this review. It doesn't, however, seem to have the same clever fingerprint proof material found with certain colors of the latest MacBook Air, which Apple terms a breakthrough anodization seal to reduce fingerprints. And after only a short while, the back of the iPad Pro was dotted with fingerprints. The iPad Pro 13 inch 24 has four built in speakers along with four microphones. On the right hand side, when you are holding the tablet, in portrait orientation are the volume buttons, and at the top of is the power button. At the bottom is a Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 port that can be used for charging and connecting peripherals such as USB C monitors or external hard drivers with data transfer speed up to 40 Gbps. I still believe that the move from Apple's proprietary lightning port to the much more widely used USB-C for its product including iPads and iPhones is the right consumer friendly move that allows you easily connect different chargers and peripherals. It should be noted that in Europe the iPad Pro does not come with a charger just the cable that reduces packaging and also e-waste as there is good chance that people will already have a USB-C charger lying around. The cable Apple provides is only USB 2.0 however which means you won't get anywhere near the maximum data transfer rates the iPad Pro's USB-C port is capable of. This feels like a bit of a mean decision on Apple's part especially considering how expensive the iPad Pro 13 inch is. A magnetic smart connector runs along the right hand side of the iPad Pro 13 inch and this is used to connect and charge compatible accessories like the new Apple Pencil Pro and Magic Keyboard. The use of this new smart connector however means the older Apple Pencil does not work with this iPad Pro. When it comes to the cameras, there is both good and bad news. The good news is that 2MP ultra-wide front camera has been moved to the right hand side which means that when you use the iPad Pro in landscape orientation, the camera is at the top of the screen. This makes video calls much more comfortable and intuitive and logging in via Face ID also feels easier. This is a design upgrade that many iPad Pro owners had been asking for and it is very welcome. What is less good news, however, is that on the rear cameras, 12 megapixel f1.8 rear camera that can film up to 4K at 60 FPS with a LiDAR sensor to assist with autofocus and an adaptive true tone flash, which Apple claims improves document scanning by using AI to detect when you are taking shots of a paper document and removing shadows from images by taking multiple shots.
Meanwhile, the LiDAR camera is also used for 3D and spatial awareness, allowing the iPad Pro to scan rooms and identify objects and allows for augmented reality apps to cleverly overlay virtual objects in the real world when you are looking at the iPad Pro's screen. Why isn't this great news? Well, you might notice that the new iPad Pro actually comes with one less rear camera. That's right, the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 and the 11-inch model don't have the ultra-wide camera found on previous models. While Apple hasn't commented on why it decided to drop this camera, it could be due to Apple's desire to slim down this model or even to stop the price tag being too high. Regardless of Apple's reasons, some users will likely be disappointed by this move. Apple, however, suggests that thanks to the combination of the 12 megapixel camera, the LiDAR sensor, and the M4 image processing prowess, you you will still be able to take wide angles short that look good although while i'm not a professional photographer i imagine the results won't be able to quite match a dedicated ultra wide angle lens Apart from the new M4 chip, the most exciting thing about the iPad Pro 13 inch is its overhauled display. Compared to the mini LED technology of the previous model's display, the new iPad Pro's OLED tech offers much better contrast, especially for HDR content, and is much brighter too, with a maximum full screen brightness of 1000 nits compared to the 1600 nits of the 2022 model. I compared the new iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 and the 2021 model which features the same display as the 2022 one side by side and several differences were immediately apparent. Watching the same Dolby Vision 4K footage, the new iPad Pro 13-inch offered more detail in very dark scene with textures visible that are obscured by shadows on the 2021 model. There was also no visible bloom with the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, which is where some light leaks from bright objects into adjacent dark areas. Comparing the iPad Pro's screen side by side, other more subtle differences were noticeable. For a start, the color temperature of the new iPad Pro's screen is warmer than the 2021 models, which means whites had a slight yellow tint compared to the blue tint of the 2021's screen. This was with both iPad Pros set to their default display settings and with True Tone turned off. True Tone is an Apple specific feature that adjusts the color of the screen depending on the ambient light you are using the iPad in. By default this is turned on and for casual use I recommended you keep it on for the best image quality although if you are working on a project that requires color accuracy such as photo editing, then you will want to turn this off. As usual, the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024's screen offers support for the white P3 color gamut. The color temperature difference won't be immediately noticeable unless you turn off True Tone and have two iPads next to each other and even then which display looks better will be a matter of taste. I actually slightly prefer the cooler color temperature of the older model. Watching movies both through the Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus as well as viewing photos and playing games was an absolute joy on the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 with colors looking bright, lifelike and vibrant. As far as tablets go, you won't get a better viewing experience. The screen also comes with promotion technology that enables adaptive refresh rates between 10Hz and 120Hz. Depending on what you are doing, this means that scrolling websites and social media feeds feel smooth and responsive, and games look more feel great as well. The display of the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, which Apple calls Ultra Retina XDR, is capable of lower refresh rates than its predecessor, which won't make too much of a difference viewing-wise but could help to prolong battery life when a fast refresh rate isn't needed. The 13-inch iPad Pro has a slightly larger screen compared to the display of the previous 12.9-inch model but is also has a higher resolution which evens out the pixel density so it's pretty even between generations at 264 ppi for the new Pro compared to the older models 265 ppi. The more pixels per inch a display has, the sharper and more detailed the image quality. The iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 uses some rather unique technology dubbed Tandem OLED. This is essentially two OLED displays layered one on top of the other 
with their combined brightness resulting in dazzling images. Some OLED displays can struggle with peak brightness and this tandem technology is an attempt to rectify that. It certainly seems to have worked as I had no trouble with viewing the iPad Pro 13 inch 24th screen in all manner of lightning environment even outside in bright sunlight by effectively halving the button on each panel to display bright pixels such OLED screens should avoid instance of burn-in where static images can sometimes remain visible after they have been displayed an issue that OLEDs can be susceptible to during my time reviewing the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, I didn't see any evidence of burn-in although this isn't necessarily surprising as it often only starts to appear after many hundreds of hours of use. Regardless, I never worried about it either. One thing to note is that the due to the 3 is to 2 aspect ratio of the 13 inch iPad Pro when you are watching widescreen videos in ratios of 16 is to 9 or especially 2.39 is to 1 cinema ratio, you will see two prominent black bars above and below the picture, unlike previous models which had quite different take depending on the screen size you choose with the latest 13 inch ipad pro and 11 inch ipad pro there is no quality penalty if you go for the smaller version both use the same technology and as mentioned they have different resolutions that equate to the same pixel density this is a welcome change as it means that if you had rather have a smaller ipad pro you are not going to miss out on the visual goodies you can also configure the 1TB and 2TB models to come with nano texture display glass. This premium finish helps to reduce layer and reflections and could be of interest to professionals who will be using the iPad Pro for a long periods of time in locations such as studios which have a lot of bright lights. You can't get this screen take with the smaller capacity models and you have to pay extra 100 bucks for the privilege. Apple sent me the iPad Pro with just the standard glass, so I was unable to test out of the nano texture glass. But I have seen it in action on the studio display and it does indeed do a good job of reducing glare. Whether or not this is enough to justify spending $100 more will depend mainly on what you are using your iPad Pro 4. Even without it, I found that glare wasn't too bad thanks to the brightness of the screen, although reflections were visible. Overall, the display of the iPad Pro 13 inch 24 is easily the best you will get on a tablet device and it even competes with the best laptop displays as well. That said, the dual OLED setup has clearly impacted the overall price of the new iPad Pro and while it's a step up over its predecessors, I don't think the screen on its own would justify upgrading if you have an older iPad Pro with a mini LED screen. However, the iPad Pro 13 inch 2024 has a few more tricks up its sleeve. The surprise appearance of the completely new M4 chip in the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 feels more and more like a real statement of intent from Apple. No longer is the iPad Pro a less device than its Max, surviving on leftover components and carrying baggage from its mobile first origins, it's now a fully fledged productivity machine that isn't just worthy of the same kind of powerful components as the best MacBook Pros, but in fact now leads the pack when it comes to Apple Silicon, indeed the latest MacBook Pro 14 inch model comes with the now last generation M3 chip. This is a move that will no doubt please iPad Pro owners while possibly annoying MacBook fans and the result is a device that is far more powerful than any other tablet out there. By skipping the M3 generation for the iPad Pro, Apple claims it was able to create a new iPad that would not otherwise have been possible despite the M3's proficiency. This is primarily evident in the improved power efficiency that allows the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 to be so thin while also supporting the dual or tandem OLED setup. According to Apple, the new M4 iPad Pro boosts 20% better thermal performance 
while offering four times the rendering performance of the previous model. It also offers 50% faster CPU performance compared to the M2 chip again according to Apple. I'm a huge fan of Apple's M series chips. I feel that they have breathed the new life into Apple's Mac products. So to see a tablet with the cutting edge M4 chip is incredibly exciting. Of course, for many people, it's absolutely overkill. But for the first time, I really feel like the iPad Pro could be a replacement for my MacBooks, especially when paired with the new Magic Keyboard cover that essentially turns it into a laptop. The iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 is the best tablet Apple has ever made and the company has clearly thrown everything at it. You get an amazing OLED screen, a powerful M4 chip and a ridiculously thin and light design and if money is no object, this is an incredible bit of kit. However, for the vast majority of us, money is an object and a very important one and it's hard to justify the huge price tag unless you are going to be using this as a laptop or desktop replacement for serious creative workloads. If you just want a tablet for relaxing on the couch and scrolling the web, this isn't for you. Check out the new iPad Air 2024 instead.